Hey, welcome back. We're going to talk today for scientific computing about GeoPandas, adding geographic information systems to the pandas data tables that we've already been looking at. So, GeoPandas is at version 0.8.0 and it looks like pandas, but it just lets us do more things using a few libraries, Shapely and Fiona. You have to make sure you install it carefully on Windows if you're going to use it. There are a couple instructions that I've put in the, the channel for how to get that done specifically, but once you get it working, it can do some really cool things for you. So let's go ahead and start a new notebook and get going with GeoPandas here. So GeoPandas and Coropleths. There's lots of things you can do with them. In our class, we are making coropleths out of them. We're going to make maps, and we're going to color them in the areas in different ways. <clears throat> so let's get things going here with our standard libraries, importing pandas, spd, import geopandas, and I think that'll get us where we need to go today. Okay, so to start off, we're going to look at the world. And let's go get something from the GeoPandas libraries here. GeoPandas, I'm going to read a file, and this is how we're going to generally load stuff up. Just like in pandas, we can read .csv. GeoPandas, we read a file, and in particular, we like shape files. Shape files are a particular type of CSV or data that has polygons inside or points or multi polygons and they have a geometry kind of column and so if we load them up here's one that's just part of the data sets let's go get its path natural earth low resolution Here's the cool thing we can do. Let's look at the world. Look, there are lots of rows in here. It looks just like a pandas data table we had before, 177 rows, but we have geometry. <clears throat> geometry right now are polygons or multi-polygons, depending on if the landmass we're talking about is contiguous or discontiguous. You need a multi-polygon for those. So it loaded it up just fine, and we can say, let's plot it. I want to draw the world. Well, there it is. And each of the country boundaries are demarcated on there. This is putting it into nice latitude, longitude coordinates for us. <clears throat> Let's look at just certain pieces of it, just to show you it does act like a pandas data frame. Say, hey world, give me the rows where the world continent is equal to South America. <clears throat> Here's another pandas data frame. So I could say, hey, South America equals this South America plot. Nice. South America is going to be the only thing, all the land masses that were in that column are the ones that we're able to see here in our subplot. This is cool. We can then take it, and the nice thing about the plot here, to make it super easy to make coropleths, you're going to say, I want to draw colors based on what column? Well, let's look at some of these columns. There's a population estimate column that comes with it. Let's use that one. Cool. Now we can tell which ones are more populated and which ones are less. It's even better to use a color map to be able to see it because then you can say, what does my color map look like? I'm going to pick blue, white, red as my color map. So blue ones are low population, red ones are high population, ones right in the middle are going to be white. There's other ones. <clears throat> There's green to blue so low is white it goes to greens and then it goes to blues 
Lots of different ways to visualize what you want. Last thing we can add in here, we can add a figure size. Let's just make it a little bigger, 12 by 12. Whoa, now we have a much bigger plot to look at. It's still low resolution, as it was saying up here, so we don't have a huge file with tons and tons of data points in our polygon, but it's good enough for drawing some maps and working with. So this is the super easy way to draw a choropleth. Now, the more you get into it, the more you want to start working on some manipulations of your coordinates. Let's go ahead and look at just North America here. Here we go. We can see the different projections starting to come into play. We could really see it out here. The projection of a map says, I have this 3D sphere. How do I take the points that are on this 3D sphere stored in latitude and longitude and project them onto a 2D surface, a map for us. There are lots and lots of different ways to do that. Now, GeoPandas stores these inside a coordinate reference system. And you can always ask a GeoPandas data frame, what's your coordinate reference system? And it says, oh, I'm gonna use this one, the World Geodetic System. And I am going to have my prime meridian be at Greenwich England, well, we can go change that. We could say, hey, North America, I want to go to another coordinate reference system. Now these, you have to go look up. You have to go to, there it is, spatialreference.org is the best place to go look at them. And you can see there are lots of them. I like the Albers projection a lot. And Albers is a conic projection. It says, well, what if we like, look at this world as if it's a cone and then unwrap the cone instead of unwrapping a cylinder like Mercator projections might do. And it depends on what we want to be our prime meridian as to how things look on that cone that we're taking apart. I would like, in order for our map to look, 3083. This is going to be Texas. There's also 3310 for California. Let's look at those two and see what happens. We're going to go to EPSG3310. Uh, and it does a whole coordinate swapping to do projection. It does tons of math in the background. Notice these numbers over here don't look like latitude and longitude anymore. But when I say plot, Oh, wait, oh, I always do this. Yes. So, make sure you save it. And then it says, cool, California is straight up and down, but everything else is branched around it. So, if we pick a different one, if I pick that one for Texas, 3083, then we have Texas being straight up and down, and then everything else is bowed around it. So lots of different ways to pick a projection that works well for your part of the world, wherever you are. Okay. Next thing we want to do. These shape files that come from GeoPandas itself are good, but oftentimes we can find our own shape files out there in the world. I happen to have one for all of the states individually in the United States. And let's go ahead and load that one up. I'm going to say, let's load up the US GeoPandas read file. It's in my data directory and it's called Tiger Lines 2017 US state. Tiger Lines 2017 US state.shp. Here's my shape file. Go ahead and load that up. And let's plot it. Oh, that looks a little weird. So, what is US? What does my data frame look like? It should have a bunch of rows for all the states. 
and it has 55 rows in there. Oh, it looks like they're including things like Districts of Columbia, Puerto Rico, all of the different territories, so the states and territories, because it has a uh, Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands. They have Guam, Virgin Islands. We need to spend some time. If we just want to look at the continental United States to draw some choropleth maps that we're used to seeing, we have to limit this data set down. So, continental equals, let's do a selection here. U.S. Let's look at the postal code abbreviations. So I want to drop off Hawaii. What does that look like for me? It does the plot. But Hawaii, which you can barely see, is no longer there. So let's just write this as a for loop here for state in Hawaii, Alaska, Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands, provinces, American Samoa, and Guam. What I want to do is sort of this line here. Let's get rid of them and keep accumulating that I'm dropping these things off. My states are going to disappear. And if I draw my continental plot now, ah, there we go. Just the states that we normally see as part of the United States. This is going to be the, able to draw those uh, lower 48 contiguous United States maps for us. And we want to go ahead and do the projection system. Let's do a coordinate reference system. Let's pick the same one we did before. EPSG3083. That gives us a nice one for the continental United States. And we should be able to get it to load up here. Oh, again, I forgot to save it. Continental equals this. And now it looks a little curved, a little better. All the cartographers in the audience will be a little happier with us instead of trying to show people this map with a straight line across here. It really exists on a globe. So that's looking better. And again, we can mark it up. Column equals land area. The color map is green to blue. Again, fig size 12 to 12. And we have a much bigger picture that we can start working with. Okay, Michigan looks a little weird. Uh, that is part of the shape file because it includes all of the lakes up there as part of its landmass area. But all the other states are looking like recognizable states for us. Okay, this is good. But we're limited to just using the data that is there in the file that we loaded. We have the land area, the water ant layer area, but it would be really cool to start merging this with other data that we have. So that's where I want to go next. I want to show how we can merge stuff. In the next video, we will start to squish things together from different data sets.